It's a method which I developed mostly by myself and partly with uh, Erkki Huominen, Professor Erkki Huominen, who now works uh, in Stockholm. And here's the con contents. Uh, first, I try to to tell something about the motives why I have I applied com computer to music analysis. And then I give some examples of uh, those methods. why I have applied computer for music analysis. I'm a musician, an organist, but I have always been interested in computers. I got my first computer when I was 18. It was Big 20, you know, Big 20, maybe Commodore. And, and uh, 2003, I started to learn uh, uh, programming and mathematics at the University of Turku. I also I, I work as a, as a church musician at the same time. Um, uh, the first example here is, uh, is an analysis about uh, com contemporary organ piece. And it's very ad hoc analysis. I have used computer just for fun. And uh, to study what a certain piece includes. This is one example of that kind of uh, approach. And another reason that I have used computer is that, uh, for example, my, uh, my doctoral studies started with a large MIDI recorded improvisation corpus, and I, I I saw that there is no other way to study this material. There, were, uh, there is uh, 90 hours music, 3 million key uh, strikes, or how to say. And so it, it's the only way to study this kind of, ma of material. It doesn't make sense to try to study it uh, manually. And for example, that material is too big and too complex. And one of my main motives to, to use computers is to find new ways to analyze and especially visualize those results. And, and complex and structured analysis is about that. Visualize news. And also that vector sequence model, in, uh, vector sequence model uh, converts music to sculptures. Finally, we get sculptures in the music. Okay. Uh, uh, I studied organ at the Sibelius Academy in 1990s, but later on, uh, 2012, I began my organ studies in Turku and uh, my organ teacher Kari Kuola gave me a piece by Olli Kortekangas who was my, one of my composition teacher and this, uh, this piece is based on major and minor triads in both hands as you see here there are D minor chords here and then there is uh, G, G minor and uh, is it maybe G, G minor and so on. And this piece is uh, in a way symmetric. It starts very uh, loudly and then goes towards pianissimo and again goes towards back to fortissimo. And now I will play you the beginning, the beginning of this.
five minutes, five minutes and twenty seconds. Uh, and this recording is uh, by Kari Wola, and this piece is uh, dedicated to Kari. And when I when I begin to to study this piece, uh, I noticed quite soon that there is something structural there. Uh, Kari, who is a musician but not an artist, did haven't noticed that, but I felt that there is something very structured. You see that this organ pedals they are uh, quite similar and they and repetitive at least. And that's why I just wanted to study this piece and analyze. And what did I do? I picked the uh, chord tonics of each part. For example, here there is D, D minor and D minor. So tonic is D, and here is uh, A flat or uh, cis, is it cis, or how do you say? G, is, 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 is. G sharp. Yes, G sharp, yes. So the tonics of the first uh, measure is uh, D, D and uh, A flat or C sharp. And I don't know if the if you if this uh, uh, term pitch class is is it? Do you know the term pitch class? It's still yeah. there. Ja, das wäre ein bisschen Basis von. So eine Größe ist aber blöd, dass das Klavier, wie der gut, dass das Klavier, das ist ein Box, das Teil, ne, was Not, die ist hoch, aber das, mit dem Sinn, na, wo Leute, das ist gut, das ist ein bisschen Klavier, die Klavier, das Reh, Not, die Kuhle, was üte, üte, Reh, das ist Reh. Das ist ein, und das Boden, das Boden, das ist üte, das ist ein bisschen Reh, 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 das ist ein bisschen Reh. Ei hirveä kuin tuossa tyyssä, että niin kuin klaveri, klaveri on sellainen, että tekee kuin tei vaatta, niin muiden ei sitten saa vaatta yhtä ottaa. Aiku, säkäli, asentaa katsotaan, niin se on tietysti luotia kättä nimeltä, jos tuntuu. Ja siellä on tätä siis? Okei, se on vaatta. Okei, se on vaatta. Mutta jos tykkää sitä, että C is zero, and C sharp is one, and D is D is two, and so on, till B, which is eleven, from zero to eleven. Okei. And then I mapped this, these uh, tonics. Uh, I plot, plotted them uh, using very simple algorithm, and I got this kind of picture. And you see, it's very structural. The result is. One question: What you mean with tonic? I think they, it seems like you mean the root of the chord. Yes, the root of the chord, yes. Because tonic is a, is a, is a harmonic function. Yes, okay, yes. Okay. Yes. So um, then I understand what you mean. Yeah, tonic pop. Mm, yeah, okay. okay. The base, base tone or... Yes, the root. Yeah, root, yes, root. That, that's root better. Root of the entire. Yes, that's better. Okay. Yeah. And so the piece appears to be a totally systematic construction. And I would say it's algorithmic composition because it follows a certain rule. Um, but it, it is made in a way that uh, it, it, it changes all the time. These, uh, these chords in the right and left hand, they move against each other and uh, they form like a kind of kaleidoscopic harmony all the time. And then I made some extra analysis and I noticed that there is some uh, exceptions there, <laughs> maybe error. And I just check what's there. And I noticed that there is a, um, there really was an error, maybe it's a typo, because there are those tied slurs here, tying slurs here, and this C goes to B and B goes to C. That's, the that's, time. that's error. Maybe it should be E minor, in fact. And 
but I have I have uh, reduced that uh, measure to to see uh, the root root C, uh, and but that's why. You can ask the composer. Yes. Yes, I should do that. <laughs> but it, it, it's printed now. But doesn't mean anything. It's yeah, yeah. But then, uh, when I listened to this piece, I felt that uh, towards the end of this piece, it starts sound more and more consonant, there, and there comes very sonorous uh, harmonies. And then I calculate, um, uh, so to say, mutual uh, tonal distances between all these three parts. And, and the sum of these distances is marked with those uh, black uh, points there. And you see that those black points go down here. And, um, uh, I, I think when I play this piece that it's, it's, uh, this effect is audible. And now it, it takes five minutes to play this. Are you, are you ready to hear this piece? Yes, sir. Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, I played this in, uh, in Turku, uh, Martin Kirko, Martin Church, and there is a big organ, 51 stops, and you can feel the uh, yeah, there is something. Yeah, there is something. Okay. Yeah. Corrodation. Yeah, but no, it's not. It's not. No, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This. Oh, great. Yeah.
you two are, I, uh, is it like a reciprocal tonal distances? It's the distances between, for example, the right hand and left hand uh, the tonal, tonalities. But I, I don't go into details and mathematics here. There are. Uh, how do you measure it? Did you measure it in, uh, in half steps or in fifths? In fifths. In fifths. But there are quite. Uh, uh, I have. Yeah, some of course, and I understand your black point goes down at the end, and then you have half fifths solution, but are more like addition and harmony. Yes, yes. And before you have a big fifth, the fifth, so that they have to try to do it. Yes, two tritones. Two tritones. Because there is D and A flat and D and A flat. Six plus six is twelve. So yes, but there, I have such algorithms that I can compare any kind of chords together and get some kind of number, uh, which uh, tells about the uh, tonal distances. Yes. Okay. Uh, in 2011, uh, this, all these examples are from 2004 and between 2004 and 2017. Nowadays, I have been more interested in compos composition algorithms. But and when I was 2011, I was in Irkam, Paris. I presented a very short paper, and uh, it was about. Uh, compositional process order. Because I'm interested in compositional process order because I compose myself. Uh, so, uh, to consider what the composer might have written first and what has been subsidiary in the compositional process benefits composition students, especially since such observations reveal something about constructing the musical form. And this question is uh, relevant in polyphonic music, especially. And you know that uh, there, are, if you compose fugue, for example, there are several phases. First, you construct maybe the uh, main theme, and then maybe fix a counter subject or several of them, and then you construct the whole whole piece using maybe three parts. And here is one example from Fugal Fugal Satz. The main main theme has been noted by number one and there is a fixed counter subject. It's number it's number two. Okay. And to study the composition order here, I had only one hypothesis. Those melodic motivic patterns that occur more than once are seen as more important and might have been written before those that occur only once in the piece. It sounds, sounds quite simple, um, but to, to, uh, to write an algorithm for that, it's, it's more, more complicated. It's quite complicated. Okay. Uh, I, I got an algorithm that searches for similar melodic structures to all parts of the piece. Mm -hmm. and, and that uh, analysis, analysis is presented as a piano sco score, <coughs> but in a way that each note is folded according to how many times it belongs to melody segments that occur at last, at least. And here's the result. It's the same, same music there. So, without seeing this Bach, Bach's music, I could say that uh, the bass line there, in the beginning of the figure, and the soprano or violin, first violin line, they are in gold, they might be very important, and that past part there may be also important here, here, but only this, this motif here. So it, it seems that this kind of uh, method works, but uh, I made this 2011 and I, I, yet then I was working uh, 
in Turku and um, this uh, I didn't continue the study but now when I when I took took it, it again now I think that I have to continue this study. And here's the, the, the some observations of on the whole fugue. So those uh, parts which are marked cold they they might have been written before the others. For example, here, here you see that this bass part here is more bold than those other parts there. Totally free sections are almost absent, and the bass part is more probably written first in bars 1823, for example, maybe somewhere else. And here is here is the notation of that that section. What do you think? Is it possible that the past part has been written before? The whole, the small, all the motifs you were looking at, four notes or smaller, longer. Uh, I I varied the varied the uh, the length of the oh. melodic motifs. Yes, uh -huh. but I don't go to that deep. <laughs> that. So so you have to uh, how or or you scale it how you need it or. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Maybe that past part is has been written before. At, at least it's very regular. And if you think about uh, uh, mm, uh, a case that you have first written the first first uh, all, all those three upper parts. <laughs> then can you find this kind of bass anymore? It's, it's maybe not possible. Okay. Maybe it's a it's a, a feedback bass. Yes. Uh, so yeah. that you have a harmony actually first. You have harmony first, some simple, and then he fills uh, mm -hmm. he fills, uh, fills the gaps with this uh, A movement. Yes. Yes. That's true. Maybe he has written the uh, the uh, bass and the uh, violin for first violin first, and those seem to be uh, just uh, middle voices without any thematic interest. Uh, maybe this uh, first violin part is a little bolder than this. I don't know. <coughs> but uh, uh, this type of analysis would be uh, more valuable if if I take uh, more if I take more more comp compositions of the same comp composer, then I can make more general conclusions about the composer's formal conventions, and of course I can take more com composers and, and compare their techniques, polytonic techniques. Yeah. But uh, now I go this, this uh, the, the, uh, the subject of my uh, doctoral studies and here is the idea of, of the method. Uh, there is time and this is music here. And the idea was that I I got the idea 2004 uh, on January 12th of January 2004, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I uh, uh, for the purpose I create overlapping segments of music. Those segments can be any kind of uh, any type of segments, tonal segments or rhythmic segment, segments or Mm, combination and after segmenting segmenting the music, I I can take some kind of comparison set. Let's let's uh, let's say these are uh, pitch class sets. Do you know what's a pitch class set? Pitch class set. Yeah, really classic. Minusta ennen oli juttu muodostava hunki. 
Ja neid hakkatakse omal vahesest võrdlema ja analüüs, et milliste struktuuride me tulla on, et me meid pühidata. Yeah. Generally, now is okay. <laughs> yes, yes, now you know. <laughs> yes. Let's say these are pitch class sets and there is another pitch class set. Uh, now I compare this, this uh, uh, segments, to all these segments com uh, compared with this uh, comparison set. Let's say this is a, a major chord, major chord pitch class se uh, set. If there are major chords among those segments, and then the conversion value you know, will be high. <laughs> Do you get the idea? Yeah. But if there are some uh, the lemons, if there are, there are lemons that it's high, but if there are uh, peers, it's quite low because peers are quite far from lemons. <laughs> At least in my mind. So it means that, that if you uh, ID, ID, identify a structure uh, like uh, 0, 4, 7, what is your major tire? Yes. So then this uh, similarity value is 1. And if you discover uh, in the structure, the structure was a 0, 5, 8, then the value, similarity value is a little bit down. Yes. Okay. Yes. Distance in uh, semicons, okay. Yes, yes. And there are there are several mathematical functions for the purpose. There and uh, so that means in your foundation you keep the same one. What? In your uh, foundation, in foundation you keep uh, keep the same one. So that means uh, six major uh, uh, six count is really the same as the as the as the. Yes. Uh, yes. It's not dependent on the the uh, chords uh, inversion. Inversion. Yes. So when the code and version are treated as the same phenomenon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, the uh, comparison structure mm -hmm. analysis is an automatic computer edit analytical method for music analysis developed by me and Erki Huolinen. And it can be applied to different dimensions of music, to chords and rhythms, as I said. And it produced dynamic representations of musical properties by evaluating the prevalence, uh, pitoisuus. Pitoisuus, what is in Estonian prevalence? Pitoisuus. Uh, pitoisuus. Mm -hmm. Concentration. It's concentration or pitoisuus. Uh, uh, concentration. Concentration. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ma saan umbes nagu koost ikkagi konsentratsioon öelda, siis tegi. No, aga kui kui... Nii, konsentratsioon. But in English, it's called, it's said, it's the prevalence. Okay, a compression structure may refer to a mathematical vector, a set, a matrix or another type of data structure and even a combination of data structures. And it depends on abstract systematic segmentation that allows for a statistical or mathematical survey of the data. Here is two simple segmentation examples of one-dimensional melodic and rhythmic data. For example, if we have this kind of uh, melod melody, and I want to segment and form uh, a six cardinal, so uh, pitch class sets that includes six different pitch classes. I can do it this way, and I, I, I do it... Uh, uh, oh, I form overlapping, overlapping segments. And now if I have a comparison structure, let's say uh, a whole tone scale, it, it has six different pitch classes. And I compare it to each of these segments. Uh, I get a certain kind of uh, 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 line, or uh, I, I get, I will get values for each, each those segments, and I can also use rhythms. I can also uh, detect rhythms. And uh, if I want to study uh, polyphonic music, uh, the uh, things go goes little 
harder, and I don't go now to this and these details, but we call this, this kind of segmentation uh, uh, tail segmentation. We have here formed those segments. Um, and one question. Yes. If your data, data includes previously the information of a uh, voice, of uh, polyphony, or Hmm. Polyphony? Yeah, so did you have the information, did you have separate, uh, uh, separate facts? No, no, in polyphony, because if, if I'm only interested in, uh, in uh, the overall chordal structures, or the overall, uh, how to because, say... Because uh, the question is, uh, for yes. instance, imagine a fugue of Bach. Yes. That would be kind of like three or four voices. Yes. And, uh, of course, if you have the data in four different facts, yeah. Uh, then of course you have the information what is one identical voice uh, you have already. But if you imagine the same information put just in one track, mm. uh, as I know it's quite important, uh, uh, quite um, unpossible or very complicated to separate voices mm. by a computer algorithm. Is it true? Yes, but if I'm interested in the overall harmony of the piece, I don't separate those tracks. It doesn't make sense because they, they sound at the same time. They form chords all the time. Or for instance, imagine the, uh, that if you have uh, some line of voices go over across. Mm -hmm. So how the computer should understand that, that they are more over across? It's a, it's a problem. Yeah, but I, I have used only, I have combined all those. Of course, oh, if you have that in two different tracks, then you have not that problem. It can be one track. Yes. So, so that, uh, for humans, it's, a, it's obvious, but for computers, it's a complicated. Computer will maybe think it's like this. Yeah, okay. But, but we, uh, when I talk about uh, cardinality, I mean uh, the. Uh, the uh, cardinality, is it cardinality of sex? Yes, cardinality of sex. See a four here. The cardinal is four here, yeah, yeah, and yeah. all those segments are uh, has four members. Four members includes four members. The four the numbers that you use here. Four. Yes, four numbers. Yes, yes. Okay. It, it comes from set theory, musical set theory. Yeah, I should. I should, I should. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and here I I have just uh, analyzed the first eight eight segments, and then I have some kind of. Uh, uh, comparison structure and function, and this is the comparison structure. You can put those pitch classes to pitch class block. This is C, this is C sharp, and D, E flat, and E, and F, and yes, F sharp, and so on. I don't remember why I chose this, <laughs> this but this is just an example about the tail segmentation. And then I have compared this, uh, this structure for each, each of these and I, I have got some values. There is one value of one. So it's totally similar and it's there. There is that. There is somewhere that set. Okay. Uh, but uh, 2004, when I got the idea, I asked my improvisation teacher, Oli Linjama, to improvise a piece in which uh, uh, I asked him to start uh, with a medieval style and then continue to Renaissance style and then to Baroque style and so on, to Romantic style, and just to, to check if this uh, uh, method works. And I, I chose a, a, a chromatic, chromatic uh, heptachord and a diatonic heptachord. And I, I segmented this uh, improvisation and then I calculated those segments against these two, uh, two conversion structures. And here you see this is uh, the dashed black line. It's, it's the chromatic, it means the chromaticity of Chromaticity, chromaticity yeah, of, of music, and here when the music is quite medieval, it's it's quite low here. But when it when it comes towards our time, it goes higher and higher. 
and this uh, uh, diatonic uh, curve goes lower and lower. I have, a, I can, I can play some excerpt, excerpts of this music. It's a 15 minutes, as you see. <laughs> And you 
see, for example, that leprosy seems to be less chromatic than any one of these. And his uh, uh, the, the, the style, how to say, there are more variants, variants in Debussy's music as, as far as the uh, harmony is concerned. But you, if you think about the, the, the most important uh, chord in Debussy's music, uh, it's very unchromatic. There's no chromatic uh, intervals at all. Okay, but I don't know this. But um, uh, as I said, you can you can analyze those uh, those uh, pitch class sets using those pitch class sets as uh, comparison structures or segments. But here I have analyzed analyzed tonality in Brahms string quartet uh, C minor, and you see that uh, not only in development section the uh, there are the, the uh, the distance from the basic C minor uh, tonality goes far. It's only here. It's it's uh, also here that that tonality goes quite far in the extra system, but not in the recapitulation. And coda is almost in C minor. In 2015-2017, I worked with Mika Kartunen, a sculptor and mathematician in Turku. And we, uh, we wanted to, to see uh, how music looked like if it's changed to sculpture. And this is a plastic model of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's uh, last uh, movement of symphony number. Do you see, uh, this is, it's, uh, it's about tonality, and you know, you know that uh, the, there is uh, there is very strong modulation there, there in the in the mean of, middle of that uh, piece. And this uh, vector sequence model is a procedure that maps musical MIDI data into virtual sculptural form. Okay. And its analytical strength is based on the tonality detection of music. And uh, with vector segments, the model musical time is associated with vectors and the movements in three dimensional space. And now I will go to uh, one video because our time is over. So, okay, one thing. Uh, this is optimal way to, to, to put all the tonalities, all the 24 tonalities. Uh, in space, two dimensional space is it's, it's optimal. But if we plotted them to three dimensional space, it's not so optimal. Uh, Fusco, I don't know about Fusco. Fusco. Fusco, I don't know about Fusco. Fusco, I don't know about Fusco. I don't know about Fusco. I don't know about Fusco. Yes, these uh, these tonalities have been mapped mathematically to three-dimensional wall, but <coughs> it doesn't work <coughs> as well as this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but so and now I go. Oh, the, I saw this one. This is about the uh, Mozart's last movement. You see here is that the same model, and you, there is that development section. Uh, and I took this, uh, this example because Arnold Schoenberg say, says in his book uh, Fundamentals of Tonality or Fundamentals of Music, I don't remember the name, that the compass of modulation in the final movements development section is among the most remote in classical symphonics. I have the name of the book in the end of this presentation. And here is one very beautiful uh, sculpture. But now I want to play you this the one example of vector segments model. Uh, this is why only linear uh, only linear uh, 
and he, he died 2016, and, and that's why we made a uh, in memoriam uh, uh, presentation. Okay, you get an idea how this works, maybe. Is this real? Say? Yes. Uh, the bigger the ball is, the lower the note. And these are C, as you know, as you remember the. Uh, the so, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, the C, uh, C minor, uh, C major, uh, yeah, 
another one. <laughs> the C, uh, C major uh, direction is one direction, and if there's C But that means you analyze chords, not only in the major. Uh, this is the Do you analyze chords? Uh, no, no, really, yes, yes, to, to get those uh, tonalities, those, uh, those bigger tonalities, yes. There are two types of vectors, those uh, uh, bar vectors, measure vectors, and those uh, note vectors. Okay. First we calculate the, the uh, tonality of bar and create vector, bar vector, and then we, we uh, plot those uh, separate notes. There is another improvisation here. But it's 15 parts.
analytic, analytic way to, to represent time. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that uh, most of the uh, publications they find is binary of pictures. Yeah, yeah. So that, uh, what would be torus? Torus, no. Or spiral. Yes. So that they have the same uh, main picture at uh, each facade uh, on, the, on the same logical position. But yes. Chromatically, chromat, uh, chromatically it looks in the circle and the circle is closing, uh, but, but it is over up to the next stage. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of. Okay, yes, I know. I, I you expect that the, the same idea is the, is the color and size of blocks. Okay, here is the final sculpture. Uh, from where do you, you take this polar wheel? What is the source of your polar wheels? Is it based on some theory? You show the polar wheel. I have uh, a number of possibilities. Uh, there's, there's a number of systems we can Use we can assign colors to different pitches. Uh, Color? Colors to different Color. pitches. Color. 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 Why did you choose that, that C is three? Yeah, uh, because we decided that D D is yellow. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. because it's the most uh, often often mentioned in Baroque and Renaissance and Italian painting. Yeah. Uh, it's the most common color. Yeah. Uh, but it's not the only color. Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, Everybody has to do this. Uh, the colors here. Yeah, show it again. Yeah. This is a this is a uh, uh, traditional color uh, theme. <laughs> color color um, uh, circle. And these colors here, they are opposite colors. Now, now this is uh, this is a rainbow scale, isn't it? Um, I don't know. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay, maybe. Scale. maybe. But we decided that D is D D major is Uno, yellow. yellow. And that's why it, it, it is with exception that you put the back uh, on F. Yeah. It is uh, it is the it is the spectrum. Uh, it's not really black, but it's quite uh, it's really uh, quite uh, violet violet or dark blue. Normally you have So the darkness is it what in dark is the uh, hue. Uh, Darkness is a different part because the hue of the color. Yeah. So this, this is interfering with that. Yeah. But it's, it's like it starts from black, go to orange, yellow, green, and then goes to blue. And blue goes to violet. Yeah. Okay, but I stop now with 20 past. Can I ask a small question? Uh, how you make the segmentation actually? How you decide what segment you take? From this uh, piece uh, in, in this model. Yeah, in, in this. No, in, in, in general, general, generally, you have two, two models, but you have this uh, CSA. In, in, in this model, we, we took a bar as a as a segment okay. because this is analytical model. Uh, otherwise, as a music analyst, I can't I can't uh, define where is the uh, the borders of the segments. Here we just decided to take the whole bars and each bar get its own uh, bar vector. And, okay. and then it, it, if the second bar goes to D minor, D minor it goes there, and if it, the next goes to A flat uh, major, it goes there, and so on. So, actually, my question is uh, how you segment and also how you compare the segments. Uh, okay, when you take oh, bars, yeah. uh, bars, then I, I understand it is some uh, very, yeah. very... Constant. You mean the tonalities? Uh, oh, whatever, whatever. This is easy my question, actually. Oh, uh, to, uh, how, how I compare the, the segments and the comparison not, not, not how you compare, but how you, uh, how you guarantee that the segments are in the same parametric basis, actually. Uh, it, it's my question, but when you yeah. take a bar only, then I understand it's slices. As yeah. in, in, uh, in uh, samples, yeah, actually. Okay, in comparison structure analysis, we prefer to use the, uh, the same cardinality in all these, uh, all these uh, segments and 
also the comparison yeah. structures. How do you know it will work? Uh, the, the number of, uh, uh, number of uh, for example, bits classes. In okay. The, yes. Okay. Okay. So there are, they, they are all seven. Seven. Uh, so all seven segments members. are as all segments are the same quantity of uh, bits classes. Yes, there are all. Uh, in all all uh, segments are of, uh, have seven members. Uh, for example, seven members or six members. Yes, from, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, because uh, that's the way the measure measures yeah. works best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there are all kinds of measures, and in fact, I generated eight. Hundred thousand different distance uh, measures using computer, using generate, gener um, how to say, uh, uh, generated programming. Oh. Oh. Mm. Here, only problem is that's that you will take one bar, one bar, but now I have objects here. Yeah. So how you take me, or you take me as half and half? We, uh, in, in comparison structure analysis, we use those overlapping segments. Mm -hmm. oh. Each each new node gets its own segment. Node, node. Each node, yes, okay. yes. Each mm -hmm. node gets. But here it's the bar okay. because of the intuitive. And you uh, take half of me in one bar and half of me in another bar. So you make me half when I uh, when some motive, for example, is in two bars. So you make. Uh, yes, yes, but as a computer, I don't see you as a one whole. Yes, yes, but you <laughs> divide me in two parts. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, the problem is if you notice it elongated from one bar to the other, this as well. Say so you have a long node, but there's a bar line in, in between. Yeah. Or is this node treated in the previous bar or in the next bar? Uh, we, there are two two ways just to take the node onsets or yeah. uh, to, to keep the, those information till the, the node ends. There are two two ways. But if you think about uh, if you think about for example that uh, improvisation picture seven hundred fifty six, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, 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 yeah, if you uh, uh, analyze improvisations, then these are not notated, isn't it? No. So it's then you uh, so you just assign a stable meter or how how do you approach this to, to make time? Yes, time. time. I just time, just time and. Uh, but from where do you define this, this meter? Uh, it's it's there. It's a time. It's a second or a, a part of seconds or so. Yeah. There are no bars. There are no bars. Yes, yeah, there are no. And there are no parts. There are no parts. <laughs> it's just yeah. one bar. In the video, you have no bars. What? Uh, I have, but uh, but I don't use it in, uh, for example, for improvisations, because there are no really bars. Where are the bars in improvisations? Or where are the parts? It 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 may sound uh, fugal. The, the, the shots may sound fugal, but you can't decide where is the actual part. But would there be a a difference in, in the outcome if uh, you can? Uh, you can uh, um, um, choose. Uh, the, you, uh, you can scale the length of the bars of the bars. Mm -hmm. like yes. If you have a, a smaller bar, or a longer bar yeah. in the system, then does it affect uh, the, the results? Uh, in in uh, in this uh, in this method, with this method, vector sequence model. We have used for that purpose. We have used only piece, pieces which you, in which the bars are at the same with uh, the same length. All the bars are the same length. Uh, you yeah. have just uh, uh, chosen to do so. To yeah, yeah. Well, of course, there, 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 there would be many ways to 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 solve solve these kind of problems, but. Yeah. Ja kes soovib rohkem, ahte sõudest lugeda, et tal on ka doktor Lööd, ja see kohtane sõudnud põhjalikumalt on seal olnud kirjas. Et I hope that we send this material and we can put in the Schoenberg Society page uh, okay. and maybe your doctoral thesis, we can put some link and, and that's a yeah, part. Yeah, it's, it's there somewhere. Yeah, we have. Yeah, it's, it's the, yes, the first one. Yeah. yeah, we would like to see the full text. 
Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's important. Yeah. Well, I don't see any link. Uh, okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's but if you if you put it to Google, you will find it. Okay. We can put the link. Yeah. Yeah. Sasada. Ni. Sasada. 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 Sasada.